From Montana's news leader, this is the MTN New News. Good afternoon. Thanks for joining us on the new news. I'm Andrea Lutz, a man in a Montana hospital due to COVID-19 and is pleading with others about getting the vaccine. We'll have that story in a minute, but first. As Montana fights an uptick in COVID-19 cases, the National Guard is now spread across the state, helping hospitals in the fight. Here's today's leading look. Well, Guard members are already helping in Billings, but Governor Greg Gianforte announced they're needed almost everywhere. So 24 troops are helping in Missoula. Helena and Bozeman each have 10 and Butte has six. A Wyoming coroner has ruled the death of 23-year-old Gabby Petito homicide. He didn't reveal information about the manner of her death, though. This is a search is underway for her fiancé and a person of interest in her death, Brian Laundry. He told his family he was going for a hike in a Florida nature reserve last week, but has not been seen since. The future of a proposed power plant in Laurel is now up in the air. Northwestern Energy withdrew its request for approval from the Public Service Commission. The company saying it doesn't mean that the project is dead, but instead it's on pause because of the uncertainties in the construction market. But environmental groups oppose the idea, claiming Northwestern is ignoring cheaper, cleaner energy sources. Well, more than a half of people it, living in the country, they say they're living paycheck to paycheck, but one group is struggling more than other, 70% of millennials are saying they count each paycheck to make it by. Well, the report also says the pandemic is partly to blame for stalling career growth. Meanwhile, 40% of baby boomers say they live paycheck to paycheck. And there are some new indications that food prices could go even higher next year. It's fertilizer prices that are high and in turn meaning smaller harvests and higher food prices. Bloomberg says fertilizer cost is the main driver behind overall food inflation and extreme weather, plant shutdowns, and government actions have all affected the fertilizer market this year. That's today's Leading Look. Well, the countdown is almost over. Fall is just around the corner. In fact, we're in the last hour or so of the uh, tunnel equinox coming our way. So uh, officially around 120, 121 this afternoon, fall will begin. What that means is that the sun is uh, shining directly on the equator. Now, equinox is Latin for equal nights. Actually, we're not going to have 12 hours of daylight today and 12 hours of night. Uh, that's probably going to happen on Saturday. I think today we're still going to have about nine minutes more of daylight than we will have of darkness. So just a little bit of uh, information there to wow your friends with. Temperature wise today in the 70s and 80s, but do we have a cool down on the way? I'll let you know with the main forecast coming up in just a few minutes. Well, tonight we take you inside Billings Clinic to talk with a man who has a very real story of survival, a change of heart, and a strong message he'd like to share. I should have gotten a shot, but I was too stubborn and too stupid. I thought on the way here that I wasn't going to make it. Adam Pazinski nearly waited too long. And when the doctor said he had to innovate me, that scared the hell out of me. Sedated and intubated, Pazinski teetered between life and death. A full week on the ventilator, two more in the ICU, and now he's going on his second week in this hospital room. And although COVID-free, his battle isn't over. The COVID tore me up. Um, I have to learn how to walk again and, and, and move around. I'm, I'm too weak. I'm learning how to do a lot of things all over again. And I'm 57 years old, and, and that's tough. Pazinski openly admits politics played a major role in his decision to not get vaccinated. But the fear of dying has him now pleading with others. We all need to uh, put our political and our own personal bias aside and get the shot. I'm probably a little hopeless 
right now, in all honesty, because we're seeing a young population of patients being admitted who are critically ill, who we don't know if these people are going to go home and see their families again. Director of Critical Care Christy Baxter says more than 90 percent of the patients hospitalized and in the ICU are unvaccinated. This pressure, as Billings Clinic this week, moves into crisis care standards. Our resources just can hardly be stretched thinner than they already are. And if we don't stop the spread in our community, I, I think we're going to have to start thinking about who is the priority to get the care. More and more people are coming in. They only have so many staff. Please think about getting vaccine to prevent yourself from having to be one of the patients that needs our ICU bed when we're overwhelmed and may not have one to give you. Along with one patient's strong message. Get the damn shot. In Billings, Janelle Slade, MTN News.